Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to take a fresh look at making selections and masks in both Lightroom and Photoshop because there's some new features that have appeared in both of these programs and I'll also show you a few new tricks that will make your life a lot easier. So firstly let's have a look at the new features in Lightroom. So starting with Lightroom we're currently looking at version 12.1 which is available as of late 2022 early 2023. So in this uh, new version of Lightroom, they've improved the masking panel considerably, made it a lot simpler because the earlier version of this was a little bit clunky and a lot of people, including myself, had trouble making it work. So if we go into the masking panel, which is this little circular figure here, initially we've got some different uh, presets here, plus some other refinements and of course it will also automatically detect people but in this instance this is just a, a shot of some a mangrove roots if i choose select subject it does a pretty good job of finding what's in focus and of course once it's selected we can then play around and make some adjustments and unless we go really crazy with um, brightening or darkening you'll see that the selection works pretty well and so for inanimate objects it's generally pretty good but you will see in this instance there's a little bit of um, the water between these two parts of the roots that have not been selected so it's not perfect but it does a pretty reasonable job and of course we can modify our selection and um, make it work a little better so let's just go in there and we want to take this part out of the selection so if I hold down my space bar click on the part of the image that I want to uh, look at closely if we now sub select subtract from the existing mask and I think the easiest way to do this would be to use the color range tool and because there's a big difference between the color of the roots and the color of the background so that should pretty much work fairly well so I've selected the water and it's taken the water away from the selection so let's now finish with that I'll hold down the space bar again, zoom back out. Now let's look at the refined mask. Yes, that works fine. Let's just do an adjustment. And so for most adjustments in your broad brush adjustments in Lightroom, the new masking and selection tools work pretty well. But there are instances where it doesn't work so well. So let's, let's now have a look at another one that is going to be a little bit more problematic. So looking for something that's a little bit trickier to work with. I've got this image here taken um, through the glass of a fish tank and I wanted to select out the fish. Uh, so let's see if it'll find the subject and uh, sometimes it'll take a little bit of time to make a selection and you can see here that generally it's not done a bad job but up here things have got a bit confusing and if I um, again just use my brightness tool to highlight the areas where it's been selected it hasn't worked terribly well so let's try that old trick of um, subtracting from that selection and mm, let's try the color range and see if that works the problem here of course is that the background is a very similar color to the fish so if I try selecting that what's happened is it's taken most of the fish away Mm, maybe not going to work so well let's just have a look at that yeah it's it's done a reasonable job but I've now picked up some background as well so it's not ideal so in some instances where there's not a lot of contrast between the subject and the background you're going to have more trouble so let's now take a look at something a little more tricky and see if we can make the selection refinements work. This is an image looking up through the trees um, in the rainforest and I wanted to do something with the bright areas of sky. So we have a preset for sky, so let's see what happens with that. And it will calculate and try and find all the areas of sky. Now you'll see that it's done quite a reasonable job around these parts, but once we get over here where it's a little bit bluer, it hasn't quite worked and if I go in zoom in tight there's a part of here which was a bright part of a leaf that's also been picked up in the selection so we need to refine this a little bit and the best way to do that would be to add to this existing mask and in this case because we've got a fairly clear 
uh, difference between the foliage and the sky, we can go to color range and we can use their, our eyedropper to pick up all of those areas of blue sky. So that's done a pretty good job now of combining those two things. So if we wanted to just darken that whole sky down, you'll see that generally it's done a pretty good job. If we zoom in, it's managed to pick up all of these parts here. And um, let's just look over here. I think um, let's just show that mask. It's still picking up this part of the, the leaf. So what I want to do now is I want to subtract from that and I'll try color range again because this was a little bit different. It was a bit brown. Uh, not sure if that's going to work. It might do. Um, it's picked up all of, all of the edges of the foliage. So let's just zoom back out now and see how that overall um, adjustment looks. And you know what? It's pretty good. The only differences are going to be when you start to get into some fairly strong adjustments. There are some areas where you get a little bit of a halo around the edges and um, it, um, it can be a little bit problematic. But as long as your adjustments are not too severe, obviously that's ridiculous what I've done. You wouldn't be darkening the sky that much. But certainly just a little bit of adjustment. Um, and if we turn this little switch here on the masks panel, if we turn that off, that just isolates that adjustment that I've made from the image. So you'll see from that to that, it's not too bad, but I'd probably want to do a little bit more work over there. So for most adjustments in Lightroom, you can create a simple mask and you can uh, add to it and subtract to it and it works pretty well. But let's now have a look at another image where we've got people in it. And this is, um, this is a, an image that was uh, scanned from a slide originally. So let's just see what it does when we try and select people. Well, look at this. It's managed to select that person and then we've got this person that person that person and that person that's pretty amazing but what it hasn't done it hasn't selected these people here and what I can do though with these people let's just say I pick this girl on the end make her the part of my adjustment So then I can look at things like the face and the body skin. Well, there's no body skin to be seen. And let's just zoom in on this and have a look at how clever this is. Face skin, not quite perfect, but it's picked up quite a lot. Eyebrows, sort of, kind of. Eyes, iris and pupil, not too bad. Lips. Considering this was actually scanned from a slide and so the quality is just not quite the same as a digital image. Um, it's done a pretty remarkable job. And of course we can then, once we've um, selected these people, we can make further adjustments. So the improvements in the selection tools in Lightroom are pretty good. They're not perfect, but they do a really good job for some fairly simple adjustments. Let's look now at going back from... Uh, from this let's just cancel out of the girls let's see if we can select the background this would be an interesting option because we've got a lot of things going on in the background and generally it's done a pretty good job although it's left this gentleman out of here it thinks it's a person um, but let's see if we wanted to darken the background down you'll see that there's a few refinements needed but again it works pretty well for generalized adjustments so before we move into Photoshop, let's just have a look at a problem image that really doesn't work in uh, Lightroom selections. Here's a, an image of a chimpanzee taken at one of Sydney's zoos, and I wanted to select him out so to separate him from the background. So in this instance, it's not going to detect a person, but it should detect the subject. And let's see what happens once it does its calculations. And Yes, it doesn't look too bad. It's made generally a fairly good selection. But then we've got some hairs here that are a bit uh, unselected. And if we start to really make a, a strong adjustment, you can see that generally it's picked up a lot of this pretty well. But on this edge, it's not done a fantastic job. And there's not really an easy way that we can um, refine this. Yeah, I can add to the selection, but what am I going to add to it with? Um, people objects let's try seeing if we can select that as an object and 
see if it'll f add that to it. Well, no, it doesn't because it's now picked up all the background. So I don't really want that. So if you've made a selection or to add or subtract from a mask uh, in Lightroom and you don't want it, click on the three little dots here and we can uh, delete that from our selection if we go back and hover on it. Mm, that's a bit problematic. In this instance, Lightroom doesn't really have the tools to enable you to make a better refinement of a mask and a selection. And as I demonstrated, if we if we do some fairly um, aggressive adjustments, let's say that we just wanted to lighten the uh, the chimp uh, and uh, give him a little bit more contrast. Um, and let's say we wanted to darken down the background, which is what I would try and do here. What I can do is um, duplicate and invert the mask rather than making a separate selection of the background. So it gives me a, a new selection for the background, which I can then go and drop the exposure down. But you'll see one of the issues with all image editing programs is that you tend to get a lot of saturation increase. So when you start darkening things down, you should also reduce the saturation. But in this instance, it's not too bad because the hairs are fairly dark, but it's not a perfect selection. So let's have a look now at how we would do this in Photoshop. So here we have the same image opened in Photoshop, and now there's a couple of new ways we can work with these tools. The normal way would be to go to the Select menu and select the subject and let Photoshop find the selection. And it's not going to be a perfect selection, but let's just have a look at this. Let's just create a curves adjustment layer using that adjustment, and um, and let's see what happens. Well, we've got pretty much the same sort of problem as we had in Lightroom. It's not a perfect selection, but let's let's just ignore that for the minute because we have a new tool that's come out in this latest version of Photoshop. So let's go back to making a selection. We need to be working on our background image, of course. And with any of the selection tools engaged, we've got an option here. You'll see here, select subject with a drop-down arrow. Now, most people won't have seen this, but if you select that drop-down arrow, you have two options. And by default, Photoshop will process this on the device. But if you'd rather get a better result, you can allow it to process on the cloud, which means you must be connected to the internet, obviously. But if we choose cloud and then click on select subject, it's going to make a vastly better uh, selection using some of the power of AI and the cloud. And let's just have a look now. It looks a little bit better. We've got more refined edges here. So let's just do the same thing. Create an, a, a curves adjustment and see what happens. You'll see now that it's a vastly better selection. But has it picked up all of those hairs? Let's just have a closer look at this. And one thing that we can do in Photoshop that we can't do in Lightroom is that we can manipulate our masks uh, directly and treat them like an image. So if we select the mask on our Layers palette, hold down the Alt key and click, we've now got uh, the mask overlaid. And we can see how well that's been refined. And we do have a couple of options here. We can go into the Select and Mask panel and start to try and refine some of these edges. Now this doesn't always work, but it's worthwhile trying. And if you use the Refine Edge Brush tool and keep it um, reasonably small, and if we go to the Smart Radius option, we can just see if we can pick up a little bit more of those hairs along there. It may or may not work. It does generally do a pretty good job. And again, we've already got a better mask to start with. So in areas where it looks as though it might be not quite right, I think that's the edge of his ear. So that looks like a pretty good selection. So we can click OK. We go back to our mask overlaid over our image. So again, hover on the mask, hold down Alt and click again, and it will take that um, adjustment, uh, oh, sorry, take that mask overlay back off. And we can see that it's it's generally doing a much better job. And that's why, in some instances, you're going to need to go to Photoshop to make a better mask. But let's also have a look at another way that we can refine our masks in Photoshop. I have another image here of a, a mangrove tree. And what I would like to do is to just do a little bit of work on the sky. So if we come back down to our background layer, 
go to the select menu, select sky. We'll see what it comes up with. Uh, again, it's using the same sort of tools that we have in, in Lightroom. And you'll see here that when you look at the image and you look for the little marching ants, you'll see that mm, it doesn't look as though it's really picked up some of these areas. But let's just work with this for the minute. And uh, let's again create an adjustment layer so that we can see the mask. And let's say we're just going to darken this whole sky down. And you'll see it's done a pretty good job. But then once we get into this part, you'll see that it's not really selected all of these areas around the tree quite as well as we would have liked. So let's just examine the mask again. Select the mask, hold down Alt, click on the mask. You'll see here that, yeah, all of those areas of blue have been partially selected, but not fully selected. So how would we do this? Well, we can do it a couple of different ways. We can go back in here, and now that I've applied that selection to a mask, I can actually reload this by going to the mask and saying, Add mask to selection. It's now um, reloaded that uh, selection onto the image and make sure I've cl clicked back on the background layer. And then I can try and add to that selection by using our quick selection tool and make sure we se select the plus option. And I can try and click a little bit more in there. Now, it's not really going to make a lot of difference that we can see. So that's not really going to help us. So that is not going to work for us, so I'm going to select, deselect that again. But what we can do with this, we can work directly on the mask itself. So go back to that adjustment layer with the mask on it, hold down Alt, click on it. You can see here that it's mostly been selected, but it's not perfect. But just one thing to remember is that a mask is actually a black and white image formed from part of the image information. And because that's an image, we can make some adjustments to it. And with that mask overlay selected, if we go up to the image uh, menu item, go to the adjustments, and in this case, I'm just going to use levels. And what I can do is I can manipulate the contrast on this image. Now, you'll see if I keep sliding the white point to the left, which means I'm pushing more and more of the image into being selected, you'll see that parts of those areas on the image that were not fully selected have now become more selected. But if I go too far, we lose some of the detail. So obviously we can't go too far, but I can lift up some of those whites into being more selected without having to do any other fancy adjustments. Click OK, and then let's go back, click on our adjustment layer, and you'll see now that that's actually improved that somewhat, maybe not perfect, but it certainly improved it. So that's one way we can manipulate a mask in Photoshop that we can't do in Lightroom. Another way that we can see whether our selections are good enough is to use in Photoshop the sky replacement option. So if we go to the edit menu, sky replacement, it opens up a, a panel with a, with a number of different skies. Now you will find that uh, Photoshop will provide a number of different skies, but you're much better off using your own skies. Uh, this one is one of mine that I've selected from somewhere else. And obviously it's changed the atmosphere in the sky quite considerably. Let's just run with that and let's just see how that looks overall. And when it returns back to Photoshop, you'll find that you've got a group of layers and if you, I close up that little panel here, it calls, calls it Sky Replacement Group. If we click on the down arrow, we can see that we've got a number of different adjustments. This is a really clever way to do it. And you can see there now that if I turn that off entirely, we've changed the atmosphere in the photograph very dramatically. And it also looks really quite believable. Um, so you can find that the selections that Photoshop will make, even though they're not perfect, they'll work well enough for anything like this sort of situation. And of course, with the sky replacement option, if you find that it's um, it's not really working for you, particularly if you've got a bald sky, um, you can adjust the opacity. In this, in this instance, I'd, I'd leave the original sky in it. But you can see when you zoom in to the looking at around the trees, that it's filled in all of these areas really well. So despite the fact that the selections may not be absolutely perfect when you use the 
um, AI and cloud selection based uh, tools, it's plenty good enough for most instances in Photoshop. So to select this option of processing on the cloud as the default option, we can go into the Edit Preferences menu and choose Image Processing. And when the menu pops up, you've got here the option. And once you select that, it becomes the default option. And of course, you also have another one, which is gives you either a faster selection processing or more stable. Well, obviously we want more stable. And so by selecting that, that then becomes the default option for making a selection. So if we were to go back in here and using our selection tool, if we click on this drop down, you'll see now that the, the cloud is ticked by default. So that's how we can actually leverage some of that more processing power. But before we finish here, let's just have a look at that other problem image I looked at, which was the, the fish in the fish tank that I had trouble making a selection in Lightroom and excluding all the background stuff. And it's a pretty messy old image. It's, in fact, it's not a great image, but it could be refined quite easily. So with our image open, if I was to go into select and let's just choose select subject and see what happens again it's going to be using the power of the cloud processing to make a much better selection. And you can see here that instantly it's picked up the difference between um, the uh, fins on the fish and the background and done a much better job. So let's just uh, look at the options here and let's create a, a, a curves adjustment. We can adjust the fish down, but more importantly, what we can do is we can make a an adjustment layer and let's just duplicate this mask hold down the alt key drag the mask from one to the other layer and now i want to invert that because i want to adjust the background so click on invert go to your curves adjustment and so we can we can darken that background down independently of our fish and you can see how what a great selection it's made without any more problems and fiddling around and even with this funny little bit of seaweed or whatever it is in the background it's managed to isolate that quite nicely there's my fish it's a pretty good selection so in some instances Lightroom is going to work well for you and for a lot of times that's going to be good enough but once you get into looking for more precise selections uh, and you need to refine things fairly precisely Photoshop's really your only option so that's all for this week. I hope this is useful and I look forward to seeing you again soon.